Hi, Chris here from Tech Tablets, and welcome to my quick comparison between the i5 version of the Surface Pro 4 and the M3, which is the fanless one. So this has 4 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabyte SSD, and this one has 8 gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD, and of course has the i5. So the i5 is first with well, base models, looking at the base models, is 100 US more than the M3, but of course the M3 is fanless. And you're not going to hear the fan ever because there is no fan within it at all, which is one of the advantages. I love fanless computers. I just hate fan noise. And actually, the i5 doesn't have a lot of fan noise that I thought it would, unlike my Surface Pro 3, which I sold because it just used to cycle the fan on, on and off all the time, get really hot for no apparent reason, just when it was idling with the system interrupt issue but anyway this one now is actually really good the fan is behaving itself so far and only comes on when the cpu is completely taxed out and uh, to stop it from throttling the fan will kick in and cool it down so that's not bad at all so i'm going to go run through some benchmarks here and have a look and see which one of these two is faster by how much obviously the i5 is going to win everything of course but is it enough to justify that difference 100 us and what kind of sacrifices are we making here for fanless computing? Uh, Geekbench 3 running on the on both of them there. You can see there's quite a large difference when it comes to the multi-core score and a single-core score, not too much of a difference there. Now, performance-wise, just from me using Internet Explorer uh, and Chrome here at the moment, I'm running Chrome, both the same tabs open everything. I find it's identical. I can't really honestly tell the difference between loading up pages. Everything seems responsive on both of these. And this honestly does not feel like a Core M. It just feels something like the Surface Pro 3, really. It feels quite good. It's very snappy. Both the systems load up pages really quick. And just in and out of the operating system in Windows 10 here, uh, it just runs perfectly fine. I have no problems with that. And everything pops up quick. So there's the Geekbench 3 score. So what about when it comes to 3D with gaming? Quite a, well, a bit of a difference there. This is 3D Mark 11. And I also tested out Ice Storm 1.2. And there's about a 12,000 point difference between them, 12,000 and 1,000. So if you have a look there on the graphic side of things, this is 53,000. And we have 59,000. So it's not really that huge of a score where the big bump is really comes with the physics scores. So in terms of graphics, there's only 550 sorry, megahertz difference between both the GPUs on this. On this, this has the Intel HD 5015, and this is a 5020. So there's hardly any difference between it when it comes to graphics. Of course, this has the fan keeping things cooler. Now, the SSD speeds. This is where things get a little bit interesting. This is the, the RAM usage right there. I've just been monitoring that. So when it comes to SSD speeds... Show you those. A large difference here. So this one actually has the Samsung in here. And I find those write speeds are a little bit disappointing. Read speeds did improve after a firmware update. By the way, at the time of this video recording this, this is the 16th of November. I have the latest updates, the latest Windows 10 version, the November update is installed. And the reads here, big difference. So there's quite a, a large difference there. And drive speeds, definitely. I mean, that's almost five times faster. The write speeds, almost, not quite. A little bit less than that. And twice as fast when it comes to read. So not bad at all there. Now I'll quickly jump back into Task Manager. I know I'm sort of all over the place here. But I'll just show you that uh, when it comes to RAM usage, I'm on 67% here, running the same amount of tabs in Chrome. Same amount of times in Chrome here, and this is 35% memory because 8 gigabytes of memory here. A lot more memory to play with. And I'm running everything the same. I'm just about to encode a video as well, which I'll have that test coming up very shortly in this video. And I'll skip to that. I'm going to do a video encoding test to see which one is faster. Obviously, we know the i5 is going to be faster from those benchmarks, but just how much faster when it comes to encoding, I will check that out. Before I do that, I'll just quickly show you also, if I go in and have a look at techtablets.com website, which is a little bit image heavy, and see if I can see any difference here in scrolling. This is Chrome, remember, so it's not as fluid as Edge or Firefox. Chrome, I should probably be ditching, really, probably for Firefox. But uh, I think I can see a tiny bit of a difference there 
when it comes to scrolling just now, I, I do think the i5 just seems a little bit smoother. It's very hard to pick up though. And when it comes to loading videos and both of them, I mean, there's a stutters on the i5 there just there and the smoothness of it. Oh, it's starting in different positions. But there's no no difference between there. They just feel just the same. If you're doing basic things like these tasks, it's the same. When it comes to the pen input, does it lag more on the M3 versus the i5? No, I find it exactly the same. Just try and demonstrate that here, that there is no difference that I can detect or see between between them both. They seem to have the exact same response time. So that doesn't affect it, I think. One of the key things I was trying to find out that I couldn't really get information, solid information on the internet was which one's got the better battery life, of course. That's very important. So I've been running both of them with the screen at the same brightness and it's looking like the core M version, the M3 6Y30, is going to get approximately four to five hours using Chrome non-stop wireless on and the brightness set to that new darker setting. And when it comes to the i5, that battery life so far with running Chrome, probably about four or five tabs, is looking to be around about three and a half to four hours. So there's a massive for me at least, there's a battery difference of about an hour more on the M3. I find the battery life to be disappointing on both of these units. I had expected about six hours at least on the M3 and hoping for real world use about five, five and a half on the i5 here. But of course, Microsoft said it can get nine hours. But yeah, nine hours with virtually zero brightness and playing a 720p video in flight mode. Okay, yeah. Nine hours if you do that, but who's doing that? Who's just looking at 720p super dark screen videos there? I don't think anyone is, but real world use here, uh, the battery life is disappointing. So I'll go now and do that test there, encoding some 1080p videos. Now, what about video editing and encoding on the i5 and then the M3? What kind of difference is there? I just wanted to see myself because I need to do a bit of video editing when I'm using this one of these as my travel surface so I want at least to have some kind of performance there. Now editing the video, I have the both exact same video on both of the systems. So on the left is the i5 and on the right there is the M3 model, the Core M. Now moving the preview around and it's just responsive really on both systems. So that's not too bad. And they both have the same exact clip. So it's a 10 minute 40 second clip on both of them. I'm going to proceed to encode the video. I'm going to use the AVC H.26 profile on both of them, of course. And it's going to be 20 megabits per second, 1080p, 30 frames per second. Both of them there have the exact same settings. And I'm going to start that now at the same time. So both of the files are going to be encoded onto the desktops, just going to get that sorted out, make sure that is definitely the desktop, test, and the other one's desktop, test as well. So I'm going to start this at the exact same time. And these settings with the encoding, so you can see that I'm not trying to cheat or anything. I have both of them, the performance with the same options enabled. They have both the same options. Editing process, file creation, it's all the options there are ticked. I don't know whether that's going to be the fastest or not using the GPU, probably not, but we'll see how this goes. So one, two, three, oh, there's a delayed start there on the M3, which doesn't help. So at this point here, the rendering on the i5 is now at 44% and it's 17% on the M3. So there's a massive difference there, probably down to the RAM and the SSD speeds, as we know, are faster on the i5. But definitely there's a large gap there. So if you're going to be doing video editing, 
you can see that definitely you want to go with the i5. Make sure you get the i5 model there. Now the gap is even larger, so 80% on the i5 and 30% on the M3. So now the i5 is just about to finish up, and in fact it just did finish now, and the M3 is still at 39%. So it's a, a lot slower, this is, this is twice as fast, over twice as fast, the i5 at processing 1080p clips, encoding them. So yeah, definitely, if you're going to be doing that kind of work, which I will have to be doing, uh, on one of these systems, then I'm going to have to opt for the i5 here, it seems, because it's a lot faster. But it is still possible with the Core M to edit videos. So you just need a lot more patience. You need double the time there to allow it to, to encode the videos. All right, so the M3 has just finally finished encoding that video that was started at 11.17 p.m. and it's now 11.29. So that's how long it took to finish up there. So it's quite a bit slower. I will look at the temperatures on both of them. I have been running HW info in the background. So the maximum temperature here that the M3 got up to was 50 degrees C, which is not bad at all considering it's fanless, completely fanless. And the i5 model got up to 58 degrees. In fact, I don't actually think I heard the fan come on at all there. So that was pretty good. So not bad performance there from the i5. Definitely is a hell of a lot faster at encoding video. So there we go, it was obvious that the i5 was going to win when it comes to benchmarks, but does that justify the 100 US more price? I think so if you're video editing, and keep in mind too that if you don't ever want to hear a fan coming on, then this is the option here. Now I really wish Microsoft would come out with at least an 8GB option of this M3 fanless version, because I think, or even a 256 gigabyte drive on that one would be brilliant if we could swap and change the processes as well, because not all people like fan noise, but as it stands, the fan noise isn't too much of an issue on the i5. You don't honestly hear it much at all. Even with that video encoding, the fan actually never came on, which surprised me. I expected it to, but it didn't get warm enough for that. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you did enjoy it, and see you in my channel with more up-and-coming videos on tablets. Bye for now.